Hi, welcome back to ODE YouTube channel. My name is Paulo and today I'm here to show you or to make the review of one of my favorite pens ever. And this pen is the Parker 45. In this case, I'm going to speak about the uh, or to show you the flighter version. Let's see the pen. This specific pen that I have here came inside this kind of package with the Parker logo with the stripes and grey and it had two main compartments, one that had the box for the pen and the other one that had some instructions there and also, where is it? An ink cartridge and let's take the pen out and this is the pen this is the Parker 45 in the flighter version so let's open this show you the pen this is a little bit used so you'll see some uh, use to the surface but let's go just for a little background so this pen was the, the the model where Parker decided to introduce the so well known Parker cartridges it was introduced in the lineup in, in 1960 so quite a long time ago now and it was discontinued only in 2007 which means that this pen was in production for 47 years there are places where I see the reference of 2008 but I think it's generally accepted it was 2007 this pen was designed by a very famous designer uh, that worked in Parker uh, that uh, whose name was Don Doman and he created um, several models that are very well known today like the Jotter, the Parker 61, the Parker 75 and even the, the very uh, special Parker T1. So they introduced this pen, this pen was based on the design of the Parker 51, it had a small nib, a small nib like you see there and a, a, a metal cap let me show you the, the, the pen that how it was introduced was not in the flighter mode which is the stainless steel one it was introduced first in this version and so it had a, a plastic barrel a metallic cap with a clip so basically this almost the same kind of uh, not designed but the same kind of inspiration of the Parker 51 but with the clip that came from the, the Parker 21 and then the nib is a hooded nib or a semi-hooded nib but not as hidden as the nib on the Parker 51 also this pen was much much cheaper and came with cartridge or converter system so it was a, really a student pen that was available with a gold nib and very inexpensive so this pen was based in a design by Eversharp and then it was also inspired by Parker 51 and it was a release in, in the, uh, the lower cost side of the lineup but then it was so uh, successful that it had several variations one of the variations was this one, the flighter, which is more expensive. But then there were even gold plated or even gold, solid gold versions of this pen and very inexpensive versions also with steel nib instead of gold nib. Okay, but this is just for a quick overview about history of the pen. Now, now let me show you and tell you more about this specific version. Flighter is how Parker called 
to the pens that they made that, that were made of stainless steel. So what can we what do we see here? We see a pen that has flat top, it is quite thin and it has the biggest diameter here next to the the place where the barrel meets the cap and the rest of the pen tapers down in both sides being the end of the barrel bigger or wider than the top of the cap. The top of the cap is like this little dish with an inner part with this arrow shaped uh, clip you have the feathers there and then at the lip of the cap you can see 45 the logo and Parker and then 45 again then a date code and made in UK in this particular case but you have them made in some other places so uh, there are there is a lot to talk about the Parker 45 let's not spend too much time on that now I bought this pen some years ago um, quite a long time ago and I bought it here in Lisbon in downtown Lisbon in new condition because I wanted a pen that I would love to write with these were sold for around 25 to 30 euros it was before the euro currency was introduced and so uh, I bought this pen, very sturdy construction, made of steel. However, the section is plastic and the threads are made of plastic. And you have here a little gold colored ring that stops the section here in place. So it's good to protect the threads from the metal um, wear. And it has a nib that has an interesting feature which can which is that it can be removed and replaced for another nib unit very simply you just have to unscrew all this little part so this is the overall the the outside of the pen it takes cartridge or converter and it is um, it, it takes the the Parker proprietary cartridges. The Parker proprietary cartridges are the same since they were introduced. So you can have a pen from the 1960s and put the cartridge from the year 2020s. It was quite new so when it was introduced so this is, these are not instructions of this particular pen so the instructions used to say these the Parker refills the Parker 45 fills two ways with the cartridge and they had to they said load with cartridge by inserting into into point section colored plug first push firmly until it sits itself replace barrel and you have the possibility of uh, filling from a bottle with a converter as I showed you so this is the, how the pen uh, works and they had to really introduce these because they were not known the cartridge before because people were used so far the filling systems that we had in the Parker system was no were no longer the vacuumatic it was the the, the cartridge converter a new system but besides of that we had only the aerometric that we could find on the Parker 51 or the capillary filling system from the Parker 61. So even the cartridges that you can see now, this is our, these are the current cartridges. Even the cartridges, the first older cartridges had these printed. They said Super Quink and it said Fits Eversharp and Parker. Eversharp was a brand that was bought by Parker at one point and the the first design of something similar to Parker 45 came from Eversharp, so this fitted both pens and it had an arrow to say insert this way 
and then the Parker Pen Company made in USA washable blue ink. So this was interesting, they had to put the instructions into the cartridge itself because people were not used to it. Now, let me just talk to you a little bit about this pen. This pen, as I told you, is quite nice. The plastic barrel, I th the plastic section is very long, which allows you to hold the pen wherever you like. If you want to hold it higher, you can. If you want to hold it lower, you can. It is not on the thicker size, but it's not a slim pen also. And this pen has a very interesting thing. If you cap it, if you post it, sorry, when you are using, it posts very, very deeply. This makes the pen perfectly balanced and a perfect size to be used. So, really a nice pen that was meant to be used. It posts securely and easily and it caps securely and firmly also just by sliding. This pen, however, in the metallic version, you would have some wear there where the cap uh, attaches to the barrel and then this is more polished than the brushed steel part there. One downside of this pen was the section. I think in the earlier models there was no longer a problem, but in the first models of this pen it was uh, usual to see that this uh, section could get uh, deformed maybe with heat or just became deformed. So it would not affect function but it would look very very nasty. So the plastic may, may have had some problems before like the plastic on the Parker 21 but in the recent models I never saw a problem like that. So this is it. Now I want to tell you something more about these pens. You can get them, uh, I would say, quite inexpensively from uh, online. Uh, they are available on, uh, on eBay and in some places it's getting a little bit, uh, the price are getting uh, more expensive, but you can still find it at very good prices. Sometimes I see them at least here in flea markets and such for around 10 euros which is quite a good price and I love this model so I usually buy them. The, this, is the, this is not the last version but um, this is the penultimate version of the Flighter Parker 45. There were other versions like this one, which is the same pen, but it had a different end of the barrel, which was narrower and had the plastic, the black plastic end. So you had the, the black tessie. It was available in chrome. It was the first uh, from 1964 to 1969. And then there was the same version with gold trim from 65 uh, to 69 and after that uh, from this uh, from 70 to 79 there were these two versions the chrome trim and the gold trim with the metallic ends of the barrel and lately there was also from the 1980 to 1989 this version which is exactly the same as this however this had the chrome trim and this has the gold trim this one was available from 1980 to 2000 and uh, to 2000 and the last version of this pen was this one that was available from 2001 to 2007 which had a different shape clip, more rounded and it had kind of a jewel on the top of the cap. But these are the only differences because inside 
what you see is the same pen. So if I just lose the the barrels, I will not the sorry. If I lose the caps, I will not know which belong to which. There was also two other that were not called flighter. I'm sorry, I'm making this a little longer, but I think it's interesting. Uh, there were two other versions, which were the Harlequin version, and there were two two main uh, types that had different colors. This is just the steel versions. This is the shield pattern, and this is the circlet pattern. So, two different pat patterns in uh, steel pens. Okay, enough for the background and history. Sorry, this video will be long, as usual. Now, for some comparison. Let's start with the size comparison. Here, the pen is with the Parker Centennial Fold and the Lamy LX Ruthenium, and you can see it is of a comparable length, but much slimmer. If you uncap the Parker, the, the Lamy, and if you uncap and post the Parker 45, because I think it was created to be posted, to use posted, and if you uncap the Parker Dufold, you can see that the, the 45 is the longer, but if you and cap them, it is the shortest, but just for a little bit. So it's not a small pen, but it is more on the slim side. And I just want to show you some other models that were, I think they are kind of similar. Here you have the, let's put it like this, the Parker 45, a pen that was quite close but more expensive, the Parker 75. I think it has the overall same shape but with a different kind of section and nib. Then a more recent pen, the Parker Inflection, which I like a lot and it has some similarities and also the Parker 25, which is not beautiful, but very well designed. And if you ask me, yes, I will have to show you a pen that I think that has some similarities, which is the Lamy 2000. Because the shape is roughly the same, then they have different filling systems, different um, girths, they work differently, but I think there are something in common in terms of the overall design. If today you want to buy a Parker 45 that are no longer made, but you want to buy a new pen and do not want to, to deal with the the eventual problems, problems of a vintage pen, you can go to China or to eBay and buy from China the Moonman 80, which is almost the same thing as the Parker 45. You can even exchange the parts. There is not a flighter version, but this is very, very similar. And so, and so now, Let's finally go to the writing sample. So, we, here we have the pen and the paper, and there is just one other thing that I want to mention about the clip of this pen, is that it has the hero shape. So, if you put it in a fabric, in a pocket of, of a fabric that has some kind of texture, imagine like this burlap background I have here, it may get stuck into the fiber. So this could be a problem depending on the fabric you are using. So let's start writing with the pen. I will post it. This is the kind of pen that I'm not sure. I think it was meant to be posted. I use it most of the times and post it, but sometimes I prefer to post it. It's, it depends on the mood. But now let's use it and post it. 
So, this is the... Oops, upside down. This is the Parker 45 Flighter with a fine nib made of steel. The paper that I'm using is the usual Rodia.pad and the ink is the Pelican Edelstein Olivine, sorry, not Olivine, the Pelican Edelstein uh, Smoky Quartz. And so, what can I say about this pen? I would say that this pen is very smooth. It makes much more noise on paper than the actual feedback it has. It has almost no feedback and you will find here a very stiff nib. So, don't expect any line variation. This is not to have line variation, this is a very small triangular shaped nib, it will not give you any line variation, unless you buy some oblique nib, and that is the normal line variation because of how the, the nib is cut, not about the softness of the material of the nib. The, so, no line variation, the reverse writing is scratchy and quite dry, but the writing with the pen is really good. I really like it. It's more on the dry side, but it is an F-nib, but I think it delivers the perfect amount of ink that you need to write with. So, I think it's a good pen for everyday writing, even when you don't know which kind of paper you will find. I think this is a good pen for everyday use, one of the best pens around, in my opinion. So, the one thing that I want to notice is that the pen is really smooth, but I find that this pen has one of the smallest sweet spots on pens that I ever tried. And that means that the pen, sometimes if you rotate it just a little bit, it writes, but it is awfully scratchy. And if you do it the same thing, otherwise it's very, very scratchy. It's horrible to write with. But when you hit the paper in the right place, it is one of the smoothest snips ever. So this is quite interesting. But I think this is not a pen that you grab for the first time and you say, okay, amazing pen. No, it takes you a while to get used to how the pen writes. And when you are used to find that sweet spot, it's a wonderful pen. If you don't like to have such a narrow sweet spot, you can always polish it with micro mesh or something like that, but I don't find it necessary. You just need to deal with this pen. The, I believe each pen has its own character, so we need to know each other. The pen needs to know me and I need to know the pen. So after that, all is okay. So, this is all I have to show you about the pen. I have to thank you for your patience to watch such a long video. I will make soon a video on why I think that Parker 51 is one of the best pen models ever made, that I will publish someday. And I just need to thank you all for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you next video. Bye.